Today, we're gonna take a look at how to create site analysis diagrams using Morfolio Trace. Now, I'm really excited to bring this video to you guys today because I think site analysis is a very crucial part in the design process. It really helps you have a full understanding of everything that's happening on your site, so you're able to design so much better by taking the time to do some of these basic diagrams. That being said, it's usually one of the least fun things to do at this stage in the design. So I thought I would take a couple minutes of your time to show you a couple ideas and a couple examples of how you could do this in Morfolio Trace to really speed up the process and make it overall more enjoyable to do as well. And everything you see me use today in the video will be available for download. So don't forget to check the link in the description below if you're interested in getting those resources. But without further ado, let's dive into the video. Now, if you're looking for a higher quality base image or background to do all of your drawings over and don't feel like using Google Maps or Google Earth, then a great site to use is a website called Stamen. Stamen is a data visualization and cartography studio that has a wide variety of maps and other data visualization ideas that you can take and download from totally for free. So all you have to do if you want to download one of these maps is type in your destination or desired location and then select the area that you're looking to download. Then you can choose from a variety of different map types and then just simply save as and your map will be complete and ready to use. So for today's purposes, I'm going to show you what one of those maps looks like by using it for all of my diagrams here today. Now the first diagram I'll show you how to make is called a noise diagram. Now this is going to be a great diagram to do whether you're at a very small scale or you're at a very big scale. And why is constructing a noise diagram so important? Well, because it's going to help you identify where certain types of programming want to take place based on how much noise certain areas have. So let's say, for example, you had to redesign a public library. And by doing that diagram, you learn that on three sides of that library, they can be very noisy. What this would then tell you if you had to program something like a quiet outdoor reading nook, you wouldn't want to put that on any of those three sides with a lot of noise. You would want to put that on the other side that's more secluded and more inept for reading. Whereas on the flip side, you wouldn't want to put something like a main entry on that quiet side, because usually where there's noise associated, that's either a result of pedestrian traffic or vehicular traffic. So in terms of how legible your front entry will be, you'll want to put that close to where the noise is. So to start off this diagram, I like to use a thick line to highlight our main vehicular streets. These can be highways, major roads, and main streets. Then I'll go back and make a thinner line to highlight what our secondary movements are. These are highly active supporting roads, major pedestrian lines, or things like public transportation. So now if you just looked at the diagram from afar, you should be able to easily tell what's most important in terms of movement. The next aspect, of course, is to start and highlight where the major noise is coming from. Now here, there's gonna be two major arteries in my example of high volume traffic and also pedestrian traffic between the two. So I know that's where our major noise is going to come from, so I decided to use a bold red line that somewhat looks like railroad ties to showcase where the major arteries of noise is occurring. Now I'm able to do this really fast because I am using these stencils, but you can feel free to represent this in any type of way. Typically, these can be done with a railroad tie, a zigzag, or some type of wavy line. These are always indicators of noise on these types of diagrams. Now, the last thing I like to do to kind of finalize this diagram is to draw a ton of varying size circles to showcase where that noise is going to be coming from. The idea here with these circles is that these are more of secondary nooks and they help indicate where people are gathering or where other major points of interest could potentially be at a scale like this. So this could be something like a lot of noise surrounding an arena, a public library, a museum, things like that will have small little nodes popping up of noise. But this is essentially what the end result of that diagram could look like. Again, it's really fast to do. You could take it a step further depending on what your final presentation format is by adding a key, a title, 
or anything that you think might help further explain the diagram without having to explain it. In my case, when I do these types of diagrams, I like to show multiple examples and multiple sequences of diagrams so that when you look at it all together, it starts to make a lot more sense of what each diagram is doing. Now the next diagram I really like to do is a circulation diagram. This diagram is crucial to any design, any fundamental design you do. You want to do a circulation diagram so you can understand where all the major points of flow are going to be coming in and out of your site. In my case, at a scale like this, it's also important to kind of highlight where major intersections or points of convergence are because these will really help guide you on where all things are coming together and where you might want to put some programming to take advantage of those intersections. For the diagram itself, I like to keep it very simple. I like to highlight the main roads in the thickest line, a thinner line for some of the minor or throughway pedestrian roads, and then of course highlighting the major pedestrian movement lines. So again, we're going to start off by highlighting our major roads in a thick red line. Again, here for us, it's these two main arteries that enclose a greenway. Next, in blue, we're going to highlight our secondary roads, which are these long major connection points for us. After that is done, we're going to take a step back and review and evaluate where those major intersections are. You can see for us that we're gonna have three of them, so on a new layer, we're gonna draw in a circular outline for each intersection. Then we'll go back to the other layer and erase everything inside of the circle so it starts to read as this major convergence point. Then we're gonna take this a little step further by adding a simple little graphic on the inside to help drive the point home and highlight the background with a red fill to pull it all together. A shortcut in Morfolio to do this really quickly is to use a selection tool and then erase or add to an area. Now from here, all that's left is going to be to add the pedestrian movement, which for us is going to be along the greenway and along the major roads. If you're having trouble deciding which roads or paths are more important, then you want to pay close attention to the size of that path or road. This really help indicates how much volume is expected to take place on these things. So if you've never been to the site to see how it's really operating, this is a great indicator of what level of road or path these might be landing on. But the end result will generally look like this. It's a really great idea to add a key to this if you're going to be presenting it because it'll make it super clear on which road and which lines are most important based on your key. But there's so much you can learn from doing this simple little diagram. It takes 10 to 20 minutes and it's definitely worth your time to further understand your site. Now the last drawing I'll show you today is going to be an open space and point of interest diagram. This diagram at a master plan scale is going to really help drive home the point of where people are gathering and where people are coming and going from, as well as gives you a clear indication of what's being developed, what is developed, and maybe what's underdeveloped based on your reactions and your gathering of the information. So if you are going to do this drawing, I definitely recommend either having been to the site or having Google Earth open to see what each area looks like, go through on Street View or take a top down to see where some of those open spaces may be. But our first step is to fill in the open spaces. Now I'm using a light green color with the roller brush. It makes it super easy and not to mention that our site is very straightforward as the whole middle artery is a greenway. Then just for clarity and consistency with the diagrams, I'm going to put those major roads in a nice highlighted color just to reinforce the idea of circulation routes in the diagram. Now you can put in as little or as much detail for this, but for me, the point of this diagram and for my site is to emphasize what's going on along the greenway. So I'm just going to keep it about that space in this diagram. Lastly is to add our point of interest circles on local locations or areas that we know are significant to our site. These could be things like transit centers, event spaces, arenas, museums, public libraries, anything that might be significant to our site we want to include and showcase here. For this, what I like to do is I like to vary the size of the circle depending on how important it is to our site. So the larger and more prominent that circle is, it's going to mean the more important it is to this site and the smaller it gets, either the smaller the location is or smaller the impact it has on our site. You can do this extremely fast in Morfolio Trace by doing one point of interest circle and then just selecting it with your select tool and copy and pasting it around and changing the size really quickly using that tool. 
But when it's all said and done, you're gonna have a diagram like this. It's gonna be really clear, since there's not a lot of information on it, on what's most important for this drawing. And just for an example, here's what all three of those diagrams look like. Now, this is why I like to do multiple diagrams, because you only have a little bit of information on each one, so you can digest each one independently. But when you view them all together, you really start to see how much work and how much education you've got about the site. Now, if you're gonna be presenting this and not just doing this internally, for yourself to use to better design in the future, then I highly suggest putting titles and keys on there to explain what each one is doing. Because obviously, if you're keeping it for yourself, then you know exactly what you did, so you don't need to remind yourself. Whereas if you're showing this to others, it's always helpful to have a key. So I hope this gave you a idea of what types of diagrams you could create in Morfolio Trace and how quickly you can do them as opposed to having to do them by hand or even in Illustrator. Again, these are only a couple examples. If you were to Google site analysis on Pinterest or on Google, you'll see that there's hundreds of different types of diagrams you could do. And the good news is you can do them all right here on Morfolio Trace. So be sure to check the link in the description if you're interested in getting a pack that has a bunch of stencils to use to help you create these diagrams even faster. But that's gonna be all for me today, so thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and share with a friend, and of course, subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the support, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.